Hello and welcome to another video. On this video I'm doing something a bit different. Uh, I'm actually going to walk the riverbed from the top of Dizeth Waterfalls, which is just round the corner. There's a 70 foot drop round there. And I'm going to follow the riverbed up um, as far as I can basically. Uh, I do know that further up it does split the river. I'll tell you a bit more about that when I get there. And I'm going to try and find or follow the, the riverbed up to course. Um, when you're doing this kind of thing, obviously I've got the correct gear on. I am the village idiot, so please don't try this uh, if there's any kids watching. Um, I know what I'm doing and uh, there's, there's lots of dangers associated with uh, riverbed walking. Not only the water itself, but there's, uh, there's things in the river that are hidden. Uh, old bicycles, Tesco trolleys, there's all kinds of stuff. Also there's debris that's been dropped down and brought down the river during winter. So we've got things like uh, big tree trunks and things to deal with as well. So, uh, yeah, if there's any kids watching, I do this so you don't have to. Right, that's me waffling already. Let's crack on. So just to the side here, there's a couple of caves. <clears throat> this one doesn't go very far. That's pretty much it. Every winter this uh, river floods and uh, here we can see this year's damage. The sheer force of the water has broken this concrete bridge as if it was just a matchstick. So some of the locals watching this video will know where I am with this big uh, rocky outcrop here and there is some caves here. Now uh, I've just passed what looks like a tombstone. Um, I suspect that it isn't uh, because tombstones usually have a date of birth, a date of death and uh, more than just a name on them so uh, it says Windsor on there now I've done a video in the past about Talagot mines in the Windsor Clive family and the Windsor Clive family had mineral rights uh, rights to mine for minerals in this area so I suspect that that is actually a border post uh, a border marker uh, marking where their actual estate ends if you like um, so I that's why I'm thinking that, that that is the Windsor Clive family because these tunnels could have been prospecting tunnels so they could have uh, tried to mine here, realised there's nothing here and then moved on elsewhere and also you would think that this, um, this could have been done by the Ice Age but my thinking is they removed all this or it could just be naturally formed like that but uh, I suspect that the, uh, the, the mineral company actually removed some of the rock from here they may have found a small vein of uh, lead ore or something like that. So that's just a little bit about this, uh, this area. Let's continue on. All right, so I'm just, uh, just past that rock face now. And it is, uh, it is quite deceiving the water. Because just when you think it, well, it looks nice and shallow, but uh, then it'll go deep all of a sudden. I haven't brought a stick with me either to, uh, to help me balance. And uh, there's all stone. Um, lots of loose stone in the water just here. I mean, yeah, it's a riverbed, so uh, you expect that. Also, uh, just around the corner, it's quite silted up as well, so we don't want to be getting stuck there. And uh, I haven't brought my, um, my mosquito spray with me, so it looks like I'm going to get bitten today as well. Right, let's crack on. We're up to uh, knee deep in this bit here. That's quite a lot of silt here as well. Right, I think what I'm going to do, rather than try and get through that lot down there, I'm just going to walk around on the bank and see if I can pick it up from the other side. So we've got some visitors. I think this one's called a uh, rump. 
That one's called sirloin. I think the other one's called T-bone. I'm not sure. There's a few more in the in the undergrowth over there. Let's look back at the riverbed there. And uh, obviously we're going upstream. Right, so I'm just. Uh, this is called Pandy Lane, and uh, a lovely couple that live in that house just there. I've just come round the corner there, which is um, at the, round the back of Pandy Mill. Uh, I did have a, a quick word with the owner. He told me I was trespassing. I so said I did apologise, and uh, he let me through, kind of thing. So uh, yeah, just a warning that uh, even the riverbeds are owned by someone. So. Uh, yeah, if I thought about it, I should have um, really notified him before, but I wasn't aware that he owned the riverbed. So, yeah, if you're watching this video, which I doubt he will do, but uh, yeah, I do apologise. Right, uh, it's going to get a bit deeper now, and uh, we've got a culvert coming up that goes under the, under the road. Okay, let's uh, tell look what's going on down here. I'm uh, going to be quite deep here. I don't know if I'll fit through one of them. We've got three, four concrete tunnels. So rather than crawl through that, I'm going to uh, pick it up on the other side of the road. So I've been using a combination of um, actually walking in the river and using the bank. I'm just on the bank at the moment. Uh, the section just past uh, the pandy was particularly difficult um, up to me backside in water and because it was fast running the water I, um, with kind of waves on the top of it I couldn't see what I was standing on or in so yeah that was a uh, clench, your, clench your buttock cheek time that was uh, this this next section is um, going to be particularly difficult as well because uh, we're going actually uphill and it's uh, in winter time it's really bad so I'm just gonna have a look I might have to get out of the river at this point and uh, go on road and then pick it up on the other side so yeah I can see it's pretty fast moving so this is just up there is the walkway the start of uh, Dizzerf to Prestatin um, walkway the old railway this is uh, an old railway bridge obviously and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna uh, get in up here and uh, have a look exactly how dangerous it is and we'll take uh, a decision from there got to get back in the river <coughs> it's not too bad this bit the problem is when the river becomes narrow it becomes a lot deeper and obviously the water flow as well becomes a lot stronger um, but it's looking like uh, there's a bit of white water here so it may be inavigable if that's even a word. Right, let's get on this bit here. It's, uh, you can see it's brought down a tree trunk. We've got uh, debris in the river here. <laughs> Looking pretty deep here as well. I mean I can only go up to about my rib cage anyway because uh, all my audio gear is in the pocket on the front of um, on the front of my waders. I wonder if we can go this way. Well that chunk's not going anywhere. I think I'm gonna to have to get out of the river soon anyway because it comes comes into a culvert. Yeah there's no way I'd attempt to, to even walk through that lot. Right we're not doing too bad. It doesn't look anything on film, but that bit there is uh, pretty deep. So I thought this was a smaller culvert. Um, this is a road bridge. This is the road that goes from Dizzer to Trelawned. Uh, if anybody knows this area, this is just about where Anglian Windows used to be, where the new flats are now. So uh, let's see how deep it is up here. I'm a bit stuffed now if we have to go back because. I think I have to go through that deep section again. 
it's not looking too bad at the moment. Actually, it sounds worse than what it is. Like I say, when the when the water's got uh, got the sun on it, you can't see where your footholds are. Right, the fruits the other side. And uh, let's continue upstream. Right, we're uh, we're knee deep. Uh, obviously, the river's got quite a lot narrower. Uh, it may get deeper. I'm not sure. I can just see some steps there. This is where. I think this culvert is gated, so uh, I can't go through the culvert, I don't think, on this one, but I don't know till I get there. Just taking it nice and easy. Just start to get a little bit shallower in a minute, I think. Right, so here's the culvert, and just above it is the main road. Um, I suspect that that bit there is particularly deep because we're surrounded by concrete either side so all that water's got to go somewhere so what I'm going to do there's some steps here I'm going to jump out and pick the river up on the other side of the road So it always amazes me how uh, summertime changes the landscape. Um, I do know this area very well, but as you can see, it's all overgrown. Uh, no one's been through here recently and used the footpath because none of the grass is trodden down. But I do know that I can get back in the river, kind of in that direction somewhere over there. So uh, we're going to wing in a prayer it and uh, see if I can pick up uh, pick up the river again. I can't hear it still, but it's close. But uh, let's see how I get on. So for some reason at this point in the video I lost all um, audio um, but what's, uh, this is the highlight for me this is where um, the, there's a pinch point in the river and um, I'm just looking down there now and that's where the leet to Telegoc Mines would have been I'm just trying to get a little bit closer I can show you and then uh, I think I'll turn the camera around at this point Right, so what I'm trying to show you now here is where you can see um, there's gaps in the in the wall there, and there's one on the other side as well. Um, this is where they would have put uh, planks of wood in to divert the watercourse or the river uh, along the leets. Now, if I just pan back there, now now you can see that this area would have been where the leet would have um, carried on to Telegoc Mines. So I've just passed a cottage called Grove Mill and uh, around Christmas time I think it was uh, when the river was flooded I came down here doing a, uh, a review of a, um, a torch to see how waterproof it is and this uh, whole lot was completely you know treacherous. Uh, I'm going to slide the video in now so you can just see how bad it was um, earlier this year. So the torch claims to have a waterproofing of IP68 which basically means that it can be dropped in a metre and a half of water for 30 minutes and it should be fine. However, it's quite hard to find a metre and a half of water that's stood still. What I have found is a raging torrent. We've just had a storm come through Wales for the last 72 hours. It's absolutely lashed it down. So we're going to drop that in the river and see how it gets on. Okay, so hopefully you can see I've turned the torch on. It's going to get swept by the water anyway, but we'll give it a go. We'll dump it in, see how it performs. Let's get it right in there. There she goes. Tie the, tie the rope off. Oh, 
Okay, so as you can see, the torch is still lit. It is dancing about on the surface. Well, it's just under the surface of the water. As you can see, that water is, uh, is raging right past it. It's going to try and uh, breach the O-rings that are inside the torch. Obviously, I tightened the tail uh, of the torch up before I tried this test. But as you can see, yeah, no problem. I'm happy with that. Like I say, the water is, it is raging. Well, it's lovely when you're actually in the water, it's killing you right down. It's a hot day today and uh, these waders are getting a bit uh, hot inside. So I'm actually at the original um, clove mill and I'm going to come out of the water now. I'm going to take a quick break anyway, but I'm going to show you where the, uh, the old mill is. Come you took the trouble to cut a branch blocking where the dipper and the kingfishers fly under. So there's a there's a tunnel there, the, the dippers and kingfishers fly under there. So these two blokes are gonna are gonna move it out of the way. Right, so between the three of us, we managed to move that tree out of the way of, uh, of the, the tunnel there, the bridge. Um, that means now that the kingfishers and the dippers can come straight through there, not a problem, they don't have to navigate around that tree. Uh, they've got a direct, direct route now. So uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit hungry. Um, I usually stop, on, stop in this area, this little bridge here. I love this, this little area. I'll just bring you uh, down here. And uh, look at all them mozzies down there. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but... Uh, yeah, when they're flying, that's good for me because that means they're not landing and biting. And uh, I have a particularly allergic reaction to uh, mozzie bites. When they bite me, you know, when they bite, it just feels like someone's tickling you and then you, you scratch it and then what happens with me, it just goes, pfft, it balloons wherever I get bitten. So, uh, right, that's me waffling. Gonna have, have something to eat. Got a little bit of a snack with me. Take on some water. I think that's the last of the water that I've got with me. So coincidentally, um, <clears throat> just before I continue, this bridge would have been uh, a railway bridge and it was built by the local landowner to encourage the, uh, the railway people that was building the Prestatin to Dizeth railway line at the time. Uh, it was built to encourage the railway company to continue the line up to where I am at Mer Merriam Mills. Um, but it, it was, the track was never laid even though they built structures just like that, uh, that bridge just there. It's a shame really, because um, there would have been even more history that I could talk about here. Right, let's, uh, let's carry on. So I'm at a point now at Marion Mills where the river actually splits. It goes off to my right and off to the left through this, um, this tunnel here, this culvert. There's a road that goes over the top of that. Uh, just around the corner is the head race for one of the mills. Again, I've done a video about this area, so I'm not going to say too much about it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the uh, Marion Mills video, and also I'll leave a card at the end of this video. So I'm just going to nip around the corner now, see how close I can get to the head race, and uh, we'll take it from there. So I can see the head race just in front of me up there. Uh, this section of the river, again, is impassable. It's overgrown too much. I've done this video in summer because the, obviously the water levels are going to be very, at the lowest. The disadvantage with doing this kind of thing in summer is that everything grows and becomes overgrown. So a lot of the sections of this river I've not been able to, uh, not been able to get in the river and actually pass uh, using the riverbed. That's just the way these videos go sometimes. So, but what I can do is I'm going to get into dry land now and we can have a look at that from the top. And obviously you can see the head race here. This was actually a mill at one time um, and this used to power the, the water wheel. Like I say, I've done a video about this uh, so I'm not going to bang on too much. And just around the corner there we can see another waterfall that just, just alleviates some of the pressure from the head race.
right, so I bet you thought that this there was going to be some kind of grand finale to this uh, this section of the river. Uh, and in truth, uh, well, there is a grand finale, but we just can't see it. So if we were to remove the stone building, this is what we'd see. This is um, Marion Spring, and this produces 4 million gallons of water every day. And this is the uh, the spring that feeds pretty much um, this section of the river down to Dizeth Waterfalls. Right, so that concludes this video. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Please do like and subscribe. It helps the channel out. Possibly in the future I may do the left-hand tributary of this river, which takes us past Trelawney. And it goes for quite a few miles, uh, that one. And um, I think it'll be a little bit easier than the one I've just done as well. One last note is that obviously I've been wearing the waders and when I get home these will be disinfected and uh, washed. The reason I'm going to do that is, although I've not seen any evidence in the water source, the water sources that I've been using today, uh, the river I've been in today, that we, in, in the UK we do have an invasive species of crayfish called the American Signal and their spores can be transported even when they're dry to um, other rivers so it's important that I wash my, my waders so then if I go to another river, another stream if there is American signal in this water that I've been in today that uh, is not going to be transported to a stream that's potentially got none in so um, it just, uh, you know, just a bit of forward thinking for the next water, water course that I uh, go away for uh, because at the end of the day we want to have uh, nature and we don't want to be damaging the ecosystems. Right, that's uh, that's me waffling. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.